Hi, this is Skull of the German dark metal band Nachtblut, and you are listening to Bloodshed with the Vampire on Metal Messiah Radio International. Skull, thank you very much for taking time out for this interview. I want to welcome you to the Metal Bloodshed with the Vampire on Metal Messiah Radio International. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Skull, I'd like to take the time to congratulate you for the band's brand new album, Vanitas, which was released October 2nd. What can the fans expect from this album compared to the bands I have released back? in 2017 apostasy and are you guys excited to be on stage I mean to perform the new songs definitely I mean unfortunately this year we're not able to perform them live but let's cross fingers and hope the best for 2021 I think with Vanitas we offer an album that is, uh, has a lot of variety a lot of facets very mm -hmm. diverse but still having this homogeneous sound and vibe even if the songs are kind of one is more folky the other one is have more like a black metal style you still have this fundamental vibe and you're not bothered by those elements. So I think pretty cool and an advantage of the new record. Before we continue talking about the new album, I'd like to go over for people that don't know the band to talk about Nachtblock. It's a dark metal band that was formed in Osnabrück and uh, the surrounding area formed back in 2005. How was the band formed? And could you please present us the current band lineup? Oh, of course. Um, the band, how was it formed? I know that people are back now kind of a magical story behind it but I think all the Nachtblut is founded like 99% of the bands out there we all living or grew up in that area of Osnabrück and isn't like a major city there are a few clubs playing like like metal and, and, and gothic music and uh, we knew each other already from the parties there and uh, every one of us was playing in other bands before at some point Askarod wasn't really happy with the direction his band took and he wanted to form a new band and, and he wrote two demos He showed them and that's how we came together. We knew each other. We heard the demos and we're like, okay, yeah, that's that's exactly what we want to do. And this is how we became a band. Listen to the, all the all the songs. I mean, look into all the videos from the first debut album, Das Elte Ab dem Amal, back in 2007. I mean, I love all the songs that you guys have been putting on. Thank you. To finish the question about the current lineup. Yeah, the current lineup is Asgrot, vocals, Greif on guitar, Ablas on bass, and And me, Skull, on the drums. Skull, one question. I follow the band. I remember in 2017, uh, Emily Hard, the keyboardist. So what happened to her? Yeah, there was unfortunately an accident and she couldn't participate on the tour anymore. And let's stick to it. She's not part of the band. Okay, uh, the tribute album release. I'm talking about Das Erste Ab dem Mal, uh, the first supper in 2007, followed by Antic in 2009, Dogma in 2012, Kimonas in 2014 and the last one that before this new album Apostasy back in 2017 and includes save the band a new 2020 Vanitas. All lyrics are in German language it's called, do you believe there will maybe in the near future I don't know, an album made in English? I don't think so. There will be an album in English. What I can imagine is if you do a cover of a song we really like with English lyrics, yes, or Are we doing a feature with a person that can't speak German, then obviously English would be the first choice. But now, when we started the band, we didn't thought about it. German is our mother tongue and it's the easiest way for us to express ourselves. And I don't think it's necessary nowadays to reach out to fans internationally, worldwide, to have English lyrics for that. And I hope so. Everyone is interested in the lyrics of the songs that great translators available on the internet. So you can translate it to every language you'd like to. I don't see it necessary to sing in English, so I don't think there will be an English album. <laughs> you know, me without knowing German, I've been enjoying <laughs> all the songs of this great new album without knowing what you guys are talking about. <laughs> And even that is fun. I mean, you, you get the vibe of this song. You will know if it's a sad one, you will know if it's an aggressive one, or an uplifting one. You know, you will get it. If it's a good song, you will, <laughs> yeah. you will get it. Of course, maybe it's a bit tricky because uh, they're like hints and puns you don't get, but it's not necessary for the big picture. It's just details you may then miss if you're not, yeah, your mother tongue isn't German. <laughs> 
<laughs> I always say that and I always repeat it over and over again. Every time I, I talk to the Germans, <laughs> a German band, and I'm at the festivals in Germany, to Summer Breeze, Wack, and all these festivals in Germany, and we travel from city to city, Hamburg, all the way to Munich, <laughs> back and forth. And I always get my problems with German, and I said, okay, this time when I go back to America, I make sure to learn German. So when I come back to Europe, I can defend myself in German. German, but it never happened. I always get a hard time. But thank God in Germany, I mean, uh, Germans are very friendly and Germans can speak English. So I don't have a problem at all. I mean, start when we go to Brutal or we go to any other festivals in other countries, then we have a problem because like when you go to Slovakia, you go to all these other countries, people, they are friendly, but you just, they just can't speak English. They want to help you, but they can't. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's how we are. <laughs> I mean, it's not that bad often heard that Germans are tend to be friendly or a great sense of humor. Actually, yeah, we do. Like, well, we are open-minded. <laughs> Apostasies, which was released on October 13, 2017 via Napalm Record and was the first Nachtblut album with a blaze on bass. And Emily, who we talk about on keyboards, who joined uh, back in 2016. What can you tell us about this album it's called Apostasy? Are you guys uh, happy with what you guys have received with this album? Yeah, we're really happy about it. It was kind of an experiment for us because before we tend to do concept records and for Post it was the first time we said like, okay, now we're doing kind of like 20 songs and then we pick the 10 we like the most and it doesn't matter if the music is really diverse. One song is maybe a bit more like ACDC like another song have heavy electronics uh, another one is more black metal. Also lyric wise, there wasn't like this red line you know, going through the album and this frame the lyrics have to be inside so kind of an experiment but it was relieving and fans really appreciated I think also that diversity you know it's, it's not boring it's not like listen to an album and you have like 10 songs and you're like okay they all sound the same but it's definitely mm. not the case this is what the people also uh, appreciate so we are more than happy with apostasy okay to go over to the new album uh, this album was just released on October 2nd via Napalm Records the first single that's Pop and House premiered August 13, which means the dollhouse is reminiscent of sands giants such as Rammstein and draw the listener deep into significant Nachtblut sound, followed by Leider Kinder that was released in September and the minor Kraus Kaikant Keine Grenzen that means my cruelty knows no limit that was last September 17 and finally the last video you guys released was just released September 30th for the track Die Totten Vergissen Nicht that means uh, the dead do not forget what made you yeah and the label decided to choose Das Pappenhaus as the first single for the new album and what can you tell us about these videos yeah why did we choose Das Pappenhaus as a first one actually when we talked with Napa Records about potential songs that could be a video first of all it's always cool with Napa Records you're working together you know they never force you or never tell you you have to do that it's never that case we talked about it and a review once said about Vanitas there are like 11 singles on that album so actually we could have chosen any song as a potential single and also as a potential first single why did we choose the Puppen House it was randomly to be honest it could have been also other way around first released Die Toten Vergessen nicht and then Das Puppen House or any other variation and with the videos we wanted that the videos are close to the The lyrics of the songs obviously the Puppen House Dollhouse it's a metaphor for dictatorship which we I think succeeded to transfer into a video and when you watch it you will you will see same for Liar Kinder the song is about who is in charge of your knowledge your point of view and your definition of happiness so there's a guy playing a liar giving the tune to people who are blind so they just know what he's telling them yeah meine Grausamkeit kennt keine Grenzen we wanted to have this kind of apocalyptic touch in the video you know we have a lot of rain fire everything <laughs> because it's yeah in the end it's about moral and about the dogmas nowadays and often called lifestyle and how they often think their each lifestyle thinks is superior to another one and how to choose it yeah and you don't forget it's obviously it's a song about losing a beloved person if we may ask before 
go over to the other video, where did you guys shot this one for Mina Krasoma Kaikent Kaina Krasen? We shot it, yeah, in a landscape close from our home area, where exactly I can't tell. Yeah, we shot it there. We were lucky to have this space, and we shot it with a great guy called Mirko Witzki. Did an awesome job, and, and still does, obviously. Yeah. And Mirko, he was in charge of doing all the videos? He did Liar Kinder with us, and he did Mina Krasen Kaikent Kaina Krasen. We shot Das Puppenhell with a good friend, Henning Hammer. He did also the video for Lied für die Götter from Apostolty. Mm-hmm. Uh, always great to work with him. And the Toten Vergessen, the lyric video is done by Ingo Spurl of Heart Media. Nice guy. Check out his other videos. Yes, talking about that video, that video was just released a couple of weeks ago. I mean to say, <laughs> when I had all my questions ready, I prepared my interview and suddenly, pop, this video came out. I said, oh, what's <laughs> great. I love this shot, you guys. <laughs> doing this shot with a rose I see the cemetery tell me a little bit about this video the video it's a lyric video it doesn't show us it's just it's to support the vibe of the song like I said the song is about a funeral especially like losing a beloved person but this song is especially about this scene how one of the band members experienced the funeral of a beloved person so the video is showing um, aspects and clips of funerals, cemeteries. That's the idea behind it. Okay, uh, Skull, on Apostasy, you brought two guest vocalists. I remember Eva Marwelle of Averium and Tetzel of Ashenblot. And this time on this album, new album, you guys did collaboration with Chris Harms from Lord of the Lost. How uh, come you guys decided to invite Chris on board this time? We know um, the guys from Lord of the Lost a couple of years already and we recorded Apostasy and Vanitas in the Chameleon Studios in Hamburg. Chris produced both records. So obviously when you record a record you're spending a lot of time together and I mean we just asked hey we have this cool song would be perfect to have a duet on it feature. Would you be in? Would be fun. And he said yes. That's how easy it goes. No big magic behind it. No master plan. It was just like hey would you like to join? Yes I would and we end up with that song. Okay.
Germans that a metal pioneer Schnachbruck yeah, released their sixth full uh, length studio album Vanitas uh, that was October 2nd 2020 via Napalm Record as I said and I like to say thanks to Natalie Camilo and to you Skull for this interview first of all how did you sign with Napalm Records that was back in 2012 for the album Dogma actually we signed with Napalm in 2011 we released Antique as a first album how did that happen if I remember correctly a person saw us live playing a festival I think in Austria and he is a good friend of the R&R who's still in charge of Mahmoud Napalm Records and um, just told him like hey you have to see those guys and so <laughs> he came to another show and from there we stayed in touch and contact <laughs> and the rest is history as you say <laughs> and now it's already your fourth album with them how are things going behind this new album from the label like I said it's perfect I mean it's, um, it's always working together and over the years of course you bond kind of so it's a really cool vibe and atmosphere to work together sometimes you hear really strange stories about labels and bands how they don't get along well i can just be positive about it with napa records so like never forced us to do anything they're always supportive i think that's a big thing like to support the bands you know never being like okay now you have to do that and now you have to be like this and oh the new trend is like this so your next record should be like they never do that they just support supportive and they're passionate about the music. Okay, going to what the recording is about, how was the songwriting in the recording process for this album Vanitas been? Actually not that different than previous. In Germany would say like we became a well-oiled machine, kind of having what I would say a positive routine. Usually it's like Askro is the main songwriter and uh, we have this folder with demos and we're gathering all the ideas inside there and then at some point we discuss the ideas and if you think like, okay, this idea is worth to be worked on we head into kind of a pre-production where then everyone is participating you have Grive on guitar like checking the guitar work on that song me as a drama checking like oh, okay maybe doing that feel like this oh there's a groove would fit here stuff like this and then it's a lot of back and forth and erasing everything going back to where you started and at the end some songs they change more or less to the final version of the album this is uh, yeah this is how usually it went okay this new album has a total of 11 track I would kindly ask you if you don't mind to go over this track and list yes we already talked of different uh, songs of this album which uh, were the songs that you guys already released as a video but if you don't mind from one to 11 would you like to present the album track and list okay of course keep it briefly because i believe that listening to music is the best way like describing is like this food like i can tell you it's salty but it was salty to you so briefly very tight it's an epic intro leading straight to vanitas which is a, just a cool you know like i love that riff i love driving force song it's inspired by the dance macabre mainly dealing with the issue that to death everyone is equal we have layak in there which is, I would say, the forky one on the record. Like I said, it's about who is in charge of your point of views, in charge of your knowledge, and how you define happiness. Mm -hmm. We have this Puppen House, the song about a dictatorship. Pretty claustrophobic, really sinister one. Kaltes Herz. I would say that that was really like Neue Deutsche Härte song, you could say. Uh, heavy riff, just want to make your head bang, you know, like, or being in the car, turning down the window and just blast the music. Nur in der Nacht. I love the synthesizer there. Yeah, just having a good time. Hearing that synthesizer, it's awesome. It's just, it's an uplifting song for me, music-wise. We have Fürchtet, was geschrieben steht. Every record of us needs one song that deals with religion. There you go. Schmerz und Leid, yeah, I said, it's with Chris Harms. A great combination of electronic gothic music and then uh, heavy riffs and metal Meine Grausamkeit kennt keine Grenzen I would say the most aggressive one on this album I mean just fitting with the title Gegen die Götter awesome black and roll song for me a little jam on that record I'm happy we didn't put that one out as a single so people can really discover that one listening to the album and we have Die Toten Vergessen nicht the song about losing a beloved person and the funeral Skull I want to thank you very much for have describing us the album track and list uh, yes uh, this is a great album Van 
Veritas are also available now in uh, different formats. I can say uh, four page digipack, wooden box digipacks, bonus CDs, talking about this wooden box, um, shirt and wooden box bundle, shirt and digipack bundle, digital album. Going back to this wooden box, what does this wooden box bundle consist of, Scott? Of course, it includes a digipack, but we also have like a bonus CD with three brand new tracks. I mean, not just remixes or something, really mm-hmm. brand new tracks you won't get otherwise, including a version of Schmetz and Light without Chris Harms. And we thought it's going to be fair because some people are like, oh no, I just want Askerod's voice on the songs. So we said like, okay, here you go. We have four tracks recorded from our show 2017 in Leipzig of the Apostasy Tour. I already heard people saying it's a nice homage on the Mayhem live recording. I like that one. We have Leather Wristband with our Nachtblut logo on. We have a deck of cards. Yeah. And we have a Devil's Pact in it. Yeah. It's like a contract and usually there's a reason behind a contract. We will tell or we release further information on that and soon in future. So if you just keep it as a piece of paper, that's what it stays. But if you do what is supposed to be done with a contract, may there will be a surprise coming for you. <laughs> Free shows. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, how are the reactions from the fans going so far? The reaction is great from fans and critics. Reading the reviews is fun. Reading the comments of fans is awesome. It's just overwhelming and nice. Now we're right into that whole releasing thing. So it's pretty hard to make up your mind to, to get a result for yourself, to reflect on how maybe the record is uh, received. Probably that would be way easier in a few months. I'm talking about the album sales. Oh, it's going so far. Especially uh, talking about these wooden bogs and all these special editions and things. Are the album sales going very good? Very good. Uh, the box is sold out already. Have been sold out before uh, the release. So the other, finally, tomorrow, there will be the charts in Germany. So we will know which position we're going to make. Doesn't really matter. As long as we and the people enjoy the music, it it's like a trophy. It's it, it's fun if you get a good trophy. If not, that's how it is. You know? A bit like the Olympics. <laughs> yeah, the record is selling very well. The streams are are cool, so nothing to complain so far. Yes, we have to deal with this COVID worldwide. Because there's pandemic, but at least for your hometown of Osnabrück, do you think you guys will be doing something, I mean uh, um, celebrating the release of this album? Not in public. (laughs) Not in public. There won't be any shows or anything. I know that there are kind of alternatives now like a band trying alternatives seated concerts, like drive-in concerts, watching the band from your car having the sound through your radio online stuff but it always have been a big part of our shows that having a lot of movement on stage and in front of the stage interacting with the people having a mosh pit with them stage mm-hmm. diving with the fans can't just see ourselves being on a stage and having people seated in front of it it's a bit like playing on a fun fair or something or like Oktoberfest it, it doesn't fit <laughs> to a metal concert so, it, it don't so work. no no at least it doesn't work for us I mean if other bands say like okay that works for our music it's totally fine and no one to blame here but I don't think it's working for us so uh, we said go big or go home so we cross fingers for 2021 only thing we can okay. uh, talking about 2021 Nacht but we'll be doing a German tour in support of this new album Vanitas this coming February and March and the supporting act will be Aschenblatt what can the fans expect at these shows and where will you guys be playing of course we hope that shows can be possible normally again 100% fans can expect joy fun sweat maybe tears who knows just yeah. having a good time that one expect living the moment living behind everyday life problems or whatsoever just having a good time enjoying that very moment at a show <laughs> uh, set list wise or something I don't spoil it like people come to the show they will experience it but I, I think it's not fair to spoil anything about the planned set list planned show elements <laughs> and so on so come and to see <laughs> this is how you experience shows the best not via YouTube or anything go to the show be in front row be sweaty with all the people around you having the mosh pit you know having a good time it's like you say to everybody you know I mean everybody wants to experience festivals especially when we're talking about big festivals like Hellfest Wacken Open Air I mean if you want to experience these great festivals you have to be here stop watching
watching YouTube and things. You have to be on the field, go there, see how things live with the people there. Exactly. You can never experience the same on YouTube. You know, you can watch it, maybe have a good sound system. Yeah, it's nice, but it's different if you're in front of a stage. Every time again, I'm like... Let me tell you one thing there. When you see YouTube, you're not reaching Germany. You didn't stay in Hamburg for three nights and have all the great times you have in, in the rhythm band and all this great time you have and while you're waiting for Wacken to start on that Wednesday night when you go over to the stage see Kurt playing and all this attraction they have for the first night and you don't feel what people feel there when they're there and you're not having the beer there all the things that you live there I mean even walking in that mother that we know Wacken for <laughs> I, exactly. Yeah, exactly there is more about it I mean you, maybe you're meeting meeting with friends before or having a dinner maybe before or meeting just to have a drink before I don't know and then you go together to the show then everything you experience there you don't have it if you sit on the sofa alone you click on YouTube like yeah, it's not <laughs> the don't... same I'm sorry nothing no one ever can tell me like oh it's the same or like oh I, oh, I saw that band on YouTube you I, I know how it is live you, you know nothing like, <laughs> just, you know. just watch the band live and then, then you can tell me okay I didn't like that band the show wasn't good can be also like this not only positive I went to shows where I was a bit disappointed after I was like okay I expected it to be different or something it's totally fair but then you can talk about it don't talk about music I love those people who like okay that, that band lost their vibe lost their magic how do you experience that I saw it on YouTube like yeah okay all right D discussion closed here okay. <laughs> forget it forget it I mean I experienced a moment that the first night I reached Waka to say some I mean we've been to Summer Breeze we've been to uh, Party Sound we've been to me outside Germany grass pop metal meeting to Bruder Soul to, to Slovenia metal days and we can go on and on but I mean like I, I remember one night at Wacken the first night at Wacken I mean that was were there I think it was on a Tuesday a uh, day before I remember it rained so much and at that time I didn't take up a place in the up height I went down <laughs> in the, where all the water goes and the first night my tent and all my clothes and all my handbag everything was wet wet and I came after the last show I mean around 3 o'clock I reached my tent everything was underwater that's all these things you experience other days I fell into the mother like I was completely with mother from toe to head I mean that's the things that and see in the band's life meet with the band talk to them I mean that's the thing that you don't see never on YouTube yeah and now you have a story to tell you wouldn't have don't have a story to tell from your sofa obviously yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, to be at the end of this interview call what do you think the band will be doing for this coming year 2021 in promotion of this great new album yeah as stated we postponed our uh, headlining tour through Germany and Austria uh, from this autumn to February March next year and then plenty of plans I mean we already had those plans for 2020 but because we knew we had to postpone it we didn't even confirm them we're working on that to reschedule them and then 2021 will be a lot of touring okay I must say three years after the previous album Apostasy yes the album the band is back Night Block is back with this great new album with Vanitas the album that will be even more mighty Oscar I want to thank you very much for having made this interview possible and I want to hand you over the microphone of Madame Messiah Radio for you to invite all your friends invite all your fans to support the band to buy the band's previous album which all uh, let me tell you one thing all these great albums as I just mentioned from the first up to the last one Apostasy in 2017 they're all great albums and especially this masterpiece of new album Vanitas which was just released October 2nd via this great ocean label Nathan Rackard you have to buy this album you have to get this album in your collection support this great band I mean I want uh, Nachblot to continue I want Nachblot to give me more great music to listen to to jam to to headbang to so support them yes I don't want to leave without ask you about this great cover artwork that I loved so much and I believe everybody loves it it's very very catchy who's responsible for and was it special design for a Nachbro yes it is it's designed for us on request it's done by Peter Zalai an Hungarian artist does a great job all the time check out his works at mortpaintgraphic.net great guy to work with we chose that artwork the album is called Vanitas it's dealing with this 
art form, especially from the um, 16th and 17th century. So it was obvious to let this art inspire the album artwork. You will find a lot of symbols on the cover art, which is adopted from all the symbols that are in the Vanitas still life art from the past. The symbols all have a certain meaning. I won't spoil that to you. You have to figure out yourself what symbol have which meaning. So yeah, work it out, figure it out yourself, and then enjoy. <laughs> Skull, the microphone of Madame Messiah Radio is all yours to thank whomever you want to thank. I'm thanking everyone who supported us over the years. Brief, short, but on point. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. Thank you for this nice interview. Uh, Skull, I want to thank you very much once again, but please, before I leave, I would like you, when you meet with them, say hello to them for me, Askarat, Blazed, and Grave, please. I will, of course. Okay, I wish you all the best with this great new album, Vanitas. I wish you all the best for 2021 for the band. I hope to meet you guys. We hope to be in Germany very soon again. I'm really missed being in Germany and enjoying all these great beers and I'm headbanging like crazy. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> That's first thing else. Thank you. <laughs> I'm hoping uh, to meet you guys on the road and like I always say, metal on. Metal on. Thank you. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>